Hey guys, what's up? It's Radar here and today I'm going to show you a super quick and easy way to get that lo-fi ASMR style percussive loop that you hear in a lot of chill hop lo-fi songs. So what does it sound like? Well, here is a coffee grinder sounding much more like a hi-hat or a shaker. And if you pair that with the drum beat, it sounds like that. Here's a drum beat on its own. Here's the hi-hat uh, coffee grinder. And here it is with a sizzle sound turned into, again, this kind of rhythmic pulse. So how do you do this? Well, if you're in Ableton, at least, it's quite simple. I cannot speak for other DAWs as I do not use them, but here is the sample for the beginning because I want to show you what kind of samples you're looking for. I would recommend recording your own, but of course you can find them on Splice or some other sample website. The main thing that I would recommend is first finding sounds that are similar to the kind of type of sound or instrument you're looking to replace. So in this case, we're talking about using uh, kind of sounds in your everyday life to replace like a hi-hat or a shaker. So sounds with like more high-end, more kind of complexity in that range are gonna do a lot better than like single hit sounds that have a lot of bass to them or whatever. Now, of course, you can get creative. You can EQ out the low end and turn, you know, a kick drum into a hi-hat if you want, but it's always gonna be easier if, if you're kind of starting from a good foundation. And in this case, I have a, like I said, a coffee grinder. This is me just grinding coffee with a manual coffee grinder. Sounds like this. And then literally taking my phone while my fiance is making curry and getting this sizzle from a pan. This is like literally the phone, you know, getting a little wet with curry steam. So those are the two samples. Um, how did we make them into something that has a bit more of a rhythm? Well, the first thing and the most important thing you want to be doing is taking the sample itself and making it play on a beat. Also, I forgot to mention this, but it is useful to have longer samples because then each sound is going to be a bit different. Obviously, I could take a single clip of the grind sound and then kind of loop it over and over in a in kind of drum rack or something. But what I like about this sample is if you listen like there's a bit of variation to the grind because it's literally like grinding a different bean, getting caught on a certain bean, like whatever. It just doesn't sound steady and consistent. There's a bit of variation and that variation is interesting to the listener, whether they kind of are fully aware of it or not. So try to find a longer sample that you can kind of mess around with. Once you have that, we're going to be kind of focusing on this little bottom thing. So we're going to click the clip. It'll open up kind of the warp sample editor, whatever it's called. Uh, you know, I think there's a term for it. Anyway, what we're going to be affecting are these three parameters. So the first one, it's set to transient right now. And what that means is basically um, it is playing and kind of revolving around the start of a sound. Um, and in a coffee grinding thing, there's lots of small transients. You can basically see them. Uh, visually, if I bump this up a lot, like every one of these little like lines is kind of the start of a new sound. So we don't actually want that. We want it to be only playing the sound whenever it hits a certain kind of beat. Let's say like every eighth note, every 16th note. And we can do that by changing it here. So let's change it to say eight notes. Now, unfortunately, that still won't really fix it because we also need to change the loop mode. So let's hear how it is with just the one eighth. Sounds basically the same. So right now that's because the loop back and forth function is on where it'll play the beginning of the sound and kind of then loop back, sort of fill the space. And we want to change that to this, which is turning it off basically. So each segment will play and then stop. So now let's hear how it sounds. Now it sounds more like a pulse, right? It's got that eighth note beat. You know, the BPM in this project is quite low, so you can hear. So already we're in a pretty good spot, but we can tweak it a bit further and give it a more, bit more definition by changing the envelope. And what this does is basically, if we imagine the clip is like this, the envelope is saying, if this is the start, it's saying, let's just kind of take it down a bit. So we'll play the start and then about halfway through, not the full clip. So right now this is it at a hundred, meaning that they play the full clip. What if we went it down to 50? Should play about half of it. 
now it's got a bit more definition you know it's like it starts but it doesn't kind of like ring out so it still feels like kind of the original one that didn't have any rhythm to it and again you can change this to quarter notes if you want it's going to sound different each time now with the quarter notes again i like to play with the envelope because it feels like they're a bit bleeding into each other so what if we went to about 50 a lot better maybe with the 16th notes you want to lower it even further so it has more definition and already we're at a point where we could use this in a drum beat and it would sound good so you know we're not even like five minutes in and we've already got a good sound but i think there's a couple things you can do to make it sound even better so the first thing i think you should do um is add compression and what compression does is it basically takes the dynamics of the sounds, so the high volume, the low volume, loud and quiet, and it reduces that variance, that kind of range. So right now, the clip that we have, at certain times, it's very quiet, and at certain times, it's loud. So let's say, for example, what we want is one, two, three, four. What we have is like one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And it's just, it makes the listener feel like it's not as rhythmic. It's a bit kind of unsteady every once in a while certain beeps beats will feel like they're dropping out and we don't want that so the way to fix it is we open up our little compressor you can use your favorite compressor if you have a different one i'm just using the stock plugins in ableton and we're going to take this thing threshold which is basically when the compressor decides to kick in and we're going to compress the hell out of this signal we're going to go all the way down to like say like 30 or something this means that basically any sound at this level of volume will be compressed so it's only like the very quietest or very loudest parts uh, that won't kind of get affected um like pretty much everything is affected so here's how it sounds without the compression and it's gonna get a bit louder quite a bit louder so i'm gonna turn it down a bit And you'll notice this, the volume is more steady. There's still some, you know, dynamic range. There's some loud, there's some quiet, but it before and after. I think it's a subtle difference, but you really notice it when there's parts of the kind of grinding that are really quiet. That's the first thing. You can play with things like the attack time and release time, but it's a little lengthy to explain. And I don't really think it's that necessary. Like that's more to taste. So if you know how to do that, go wild. The next thing I think you should do is add some saturation. Basically, this is kind of like distortion or warmth. And what it's doing is sort of adding some depth and like meat to the sound. Saturation is great on drums in general. But what we want to do is basically take the sounds and kind of flesh them out a bit. And we're going to do that by adding in the saturation. So here we have the drive knob. I'm just going to turn that way up. I'm going to do say like 20, 20 decibels. Of course, that's going to make it a lot louder. So let's turn it down about 20 decibels. What we're trying to do is not to make it necessarily louder, more just kind of thicker. And this is actually probably going to raise the perceived loudness. Um, so even though like we're actually going to technically getting a little bit quieter, it's going to feel louder because it's more full. But here it is without it. And here it is with it. It's actually kind of subtle. We could go up a bit further. The have just has like a bit more crunch, a bit more grit to it. You know, even if we keep the levels basically the same. And you can go, you know, even harder with the saturation curve. Now it's like really gritty. Really, this is kind of something you do to taste, but I think it is an important part about modifying the sound. So. Those are the two main things I would change. Beyond that, you can add things like reverb if you want. So say this is the reverb on. It just fills the space a bit. In this case, I would probably not add it or add very little, just to give it a little bit of a tail afterwards that kind of makes it feel natural. And then oftentimes it's worth it to kind of add some EQ, both for sort of the sh shaping of the sound and also for the mix. So you'll notice if we hit this little um, audition mode, this is like the headphone and you click it. A lot of this low end that we're cutting out, you can't even hear. So in the interest of not like having to deal with it later on in the mix and it affecting like the compressor, I'm just going to take a lot of it out. 
we start to hear it. So I, I just want to take out the parts we don't want to know. And then if we wanted to like lower the high end, that would affect the sound. So say for example, here's it with all the high end. Up to you really. Um, maybe you want to do just a bit less. Either way. You have a very, very interesting sound. And again, as we mentioned before, you can go back, you can change it to a quarter notes. You know, figure out what you need to do to make it fit. And that's it. It's that simple. Everything I just did, I did with the uh, sizzle sound as well. This is the original sound. And this is the modified version. You can see compressor, saturator. The utility, I added it to be mono because if you look at the sound itself, for some reason, it was like more on one channel than the other. It was like more on the left or not on the right. Same thing. I set it to eighth notes. And like anything in a drum beat, this is going to work for some drum beats. It's not going to sound good with other drum beats. Um, it is like, you know, you can't put a hi-hat pattern on every drum beat and have it sound great because a lot of it is about like the sound fitting in. But I think this is a great way to kind of add some unique element to your sound. And there actually are other ways you can do this. So if you're interested in learning more, um, for example, I have a little can opener sound, which I turned into this. If you're interested in learning more about that, leave a like on the video, leave a comment on the video, and I'll do a follow-up one on how you can change your sounds kind of with more effort and work, but get a different kind of vibe. Also, all this video was made to help promote my latest album, which is Everything All at Once. It comes out December 6th, and you should definitely check it out if you're a fan of that kind of lo-fi chill hop genre. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.